Uh, talk about a couple shows on that on that run. Uh, the Day on the Green uh, 91 show, man. Tell me a little bit about what you remember from Day on the Green 91. Coming home as champions, you know, for sure. Coming, coming, uh, returning as heroes. How does that go? Is that something like that? <laughs> something like returning that. Returning as heroes. Uh, so many people there from the beginning and the early fandom and all that, and the beginning of the foundation of the Bay Area uh, thrash scene and the sport. Everybody knew there was something special there, okay? All of the cream rises to the top. We know which Bay Area bands are bad motherfuckers, and there's a lot of them, but there's ones that rose, and there's a reason why. When you're in that heavy a competition, man, you've got to be on your toes. And so we fortunately had Lars's foresight, James's riffs, you know, and all, and all of our uh, tenacity together <laughs> to be able to get to that place and go around like we're talking about, man. Take all those doses of dopamine, all the doses of adrenaline, all the things back and forth from the people, good and bad, that happen out on the road. All the stuff within each other when you're elbow to elbow every fucking day and still being able to, to support each other and go out and not everyone want to be the weak one on the stage. Make sure that everybody together is like, right on, dude, we can do this. We can do this. When you're having a bad day and your boys come around still, come on, bro, we can do it. That type of shit. It was all intact like it should have been. Um, so we had done, uh, what, a handful of shows when we came back for that. We'd been out for a few weeks or something. And making it just firing on all cylinders, man. From the time the the Phoenix Theater to that whatever that was a couple months later, man, we were primed up, buddy. And I had the uh, Olympic bases going. You know, Santa Rosa, they built me all these custom JN bases, right? And a six string, weighed about forty fucking pounds. I mean, I'm exaggerating a little bit, but it was heavy. Uh, the six string solid maple uh, for Sabbath True with that that top string about that big around, you know. And you could just see people in the front of the basement just go, what the? You get the sternums coming out, boom. Pretty good shit, man, for real. But they, uh, I think that was one of the best shows that we ever played. And because we were pridefully showing off for <laughs> our homeboys, right? The guest list at that one, dude, was half of the fucking stadium. <laughs> That's not much. That's not much exaggeration on that one. The uh, how how did the Bay Area guys take you? Obviously, you know, being a, a Michigan Phoenix guy, kind of coming into Metallica. Any 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 animosity there, dude? You know, I didn't get to spend a whole lot of time amongst everybody. Um, it wasn't the same as like the hang earlier on when Metallica moved from Los Angeles to San Francisco and kind of built their thing there. By the time that I got in, we were rolling. You know, I was home for. 20 days a year or some shit. They're like, you know, um, for the most part, uh, got uh, support and, um, you know, like camaraderie from everybody. There's quite a good handful of recordings of Exodus guys from 86 or 87, you know, all the way back. And um, they robbed for Machine Head with their violence. And, uh, you know, those kind of guys, man, We they would always be pretty good to me. I say the majority of people were really quite good to me. Any of the bands that I respected, for sure. Yeah, when I was out, I just didn't, really, didn't have much time to get out, man. Another show around that time was the uh, the Moscow show, which actually, for some reason, Pantera gets more video acclaim for that show. But, you know, you guys were higher up on the bill. But, you know, they always, they always play, like, Pantera's Domination, things like that, as it was a Pantera show. But that was much, much, much a uh, Metallica show. Pantera was on at 10 a.m. Right. And, that, and that's how wicked they were. So, you know, that's speaking of the cream of the crop. Yeah. <laughs> when you have enough hours, days, years in together, and you become one, you become a part of something that's bigger than any of you. You know, it's a great, a grand example right there of the hours, the determination, and the pride that they had. Um, I remember those guys getting off because the, they were the only ones that I think weren't on the plane with us. So when, I don't know if you know the story, if you want me to tell it again. No, go ahead. People have heard it before probably a few times. I've told it a few times, but, um, you know, we were in the Eastern Bloc touring with ACDC at the time, right? There was still a lot of still communist nations that hadn't been switched over to Slovenia, blah, 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 this thing yet. And uh, the coup starts happening in Russia. And word comes out, there's kind of mumblings amongst the managers and stuff like that. And we heard some kind of things are going to uh, go play this big show somewhere. And 
So we got a message from a prime minister representative from Russia or something, got through to our management. And they had talked to the kids that stood up to the tanks, you know, the, the leaders of the of the resistance, whatever you want to call that. Um, what would you like in reward for saving us all? You know, we want American rock and roll. We want Guns N' Roses. We want Metallica, you know. So ACDC and Metallica right around the corner, as far as you know, as far as it goes. Uh, Time Warner gets behind the whole thing. They see a giant opportunity to make world history, which it is now. You know, uh, they send this plane for us. Black Crows, ACDC, and Metallica were all together playing some shows. I think they were like Monsters or Rock labeled shows or something in Europe. I believe so, yeah. Eastern Bloc, yeah. And uh, this plane shows up, and it's, it's, man, we could fit this room inside part of it <laughs> for sure. Right. You know, we had like couches and full fucking deal, man. I never seen nothing like it. We've been on a couple of nice planes, but this was insane, really, because it was a big ass plane, like a proper big plane where you stand up and walk around around and shit. So being on plane with Angus and Malky and all those guys at one time, you know, going through your mind like Big Bopper, man, fucking you know, <laughs> Buddy Holly and the day metal died and whatever, all this crazy shit. And everybody's all joking about it because it was still quite a time where we, we everybody imbibed still. We're talking about 91. Not everybody still hit whatever they wanted to hit back then, you know, uh, kind of making the rules on our own, getting away with an awful lot. An awful lot. Uh, I remember we had all landed and stuff, and it's probably, you know, it, was, it could have been any, anywhere. I mean, it could have been where you're sitting right now in the town, went out in the town, played where you are, and the kids right there is Metallica shirt and his album to be signed. And they're just like any fucking where else we've been. But it's Russia, and the album the kid has is a six months' wages. <laughs> right. The shirt he's wearing is an offshoot, but it was still six months' wages. Right. You know, that kind of, you get a little perspective on that shit. It ain't hot topic down the road. You know, <laughs> it was none of, none of that happening. So I remember Pantera came in a little bit late. And they get off their bus and we were already in there kind of hanging. And they were fucking shot, dude. They were, they'd been from, I don't know, man. They could have swam from Dallas for all I know. Really. That's yeah. what they, they were. They'd been through the flights and the thing and the thing. They got up that next morning and crushed every fucker. You know? They had to be at like 8.30 in the morning to get a thing going, man. They probably had an hour and a half of sleep at that, and they got right in and started hitting the beers with us and stuff. So it's like, uh, you know, uh, just the, 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 like, once again, not for everyone. And then for it to be able to pull that off, and it was so perfect, the graininess of the black and white, somewhat sepia film, and, you know, like the... They had their fresh ears, man. They all these people building up to this thing, and there's how many ever there's only only a few hundred thousand across the field at that time. Right. A mere, a mere quarter million at 10 in the morning. Whatever the fuck, man, right? A lot of people that are in the morning. Perfect for these guys. Perfect. The way the film came off, the way of diamond, come on, dude. Untouchable. Oh yeah. Right? Phil with the mask and the thing and the dude, vicious. <laughs> I watched it so I watched that way more than I ever watched Metallica Park. <laughs> I tell you, Primal Concrete Sledge, man, just they throw that down, forget it. Mm. He's like, follow that, motherfuckers. It was pretty good. It's pretty good, gotta say. But it was perfect element for them. We all were we all were in weird states of mind, I guarantee you, coming into that thing. There was nothing normal about it. Dressing rooms were army tents, you know, it was like just not anything normal. You've seen the film, helicopters 30 feet above people's head. The fuck is that all about? <laughs> Weird. But anyway, we still came off, dude. And I remember not getting in trouble, but like being frowned upon a little bit. I went up on uh, Angus's habit trail, okay. up, up, all the way up on the climbing way, way. I'm, I'm not supposed to do that. Only Angus is supposed to do that when the lights are on later tonight. When I was like, oh, man, come on, this is one time. <laughs> There's, there's there's a million people here. <laughs> we go up and run around for a minute. See if I can get lost up there. How how often were you watching the crowd, watching the helicopters, trying to see from side to side? You know, taking what did it take away from your performance at all? Kind of getting lost in the moment. It was a considerable different demand on your awareness 
a consciousness than just the average, you know, watching a bottle fly by or somebody throwing some shit or a fan coming up behind you or whatever like that. It made different awareness. You always got to be that. Your, your head's on a swivel, having to remember every song that's coming up. You know, we don't have sheet music kind of fucking stage, dude. <laughs> it's like there's, you know, two and a half hours of songs up here waiting to be executed perfectly. And if you miss one note, y'all look at each other like, you know, it's got to be. People are, people are coming to see Metallica, dude. Okay, so yeah, it needs to be. You know, you got to be on your toes. So it added a way different thing. It was it was uh, undeniable. What it, is it? I don't know if it's the words perpetual, but it had to be all. It had to be constant. Constant's the word. There was no way to come off the vigilance of got to get to that mic, get over there. Then, 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 but it was. Uh, I was watching a lot of things that we would usually stop the show for. If I was in Wichita, if I was in Indianapolis, or if I was in New York City and we saw that happen in the crowd, we would stop the show and make sure that that person got helped before we continued the song. All right? We couldn't do that. So that was quite a bit different element. Yeah, you definitely see that. Obviously, in the, the Pantera footage, they show a lot of the uh, cops beating the kids and things like that. Yeah, it was pretty Dude, So keep, keep that thought for a second. That was the first hour. <laughs> okay, it still went... 14 hours after that into yeah. the dark with no lights outside only the lights from the stage and what 400 portatoles for fucking 800,000 people what well, um hmm. you know come on. <laughs> it was it was it was brutal dude people died and people were born you know it was heavy as fuck Good thing there wasn't Facebook and Twitter back then. There'd be a lot of people complaining about the traffic or something, you know? Great show, but I'm stuck <laughs> in traffic for 12 hours. <laughs> oh, man. You know, because it was a free concert, right? And it was in the middle of there. And um, and uh, every uh, national radio, like national public radio from each of the Baltic states and all that shit announced it's a free concert with these American rock bands. And they got to say ACDC and Metallica next to each other. So people started coming from... But they were in the days before all around the town. Um, but, dude, the things that we learned there, I can only speak for myself right now. My other boys can tell their own stories. But um, my the uh, sobering uh, experiences in that place made me appreciate every single sip of coffee that I have every day. Um, appreciate hot water coming out of the sticker when I turn the H on. Clean hot water comes out at me. Don't take that shit for granted, all right? I'm telling you right now. So that, that's what that place taught me. And I've been to some pretty rough places, but that place for an established nation was, uh, yeah, man. Yeah, man. Sobering, bro. 